This video demonstrates how to close a wound with interrupted sutures tied with an instrument tie. The instruments used are the Atson toothed forceps, which is held like a pencil, a needle holder, which is held with the tips of the thumb and ring finger and supported along the shaft by the index finger. The ratchet is opened and closed when picking up the needle. There are different sized needle holders depending on the size of the needle to be used. The needle holder can also be used by the panning method. It allows greater freedom of rotation of the instrument. The scissors is also held at the tips of the thumb and ring finger and supported by the index finger. It is recommended that the tip of the scissor is used when cutting the sutures. The needle is usually mounted onto the needle holder two thirds the way along its curve from the tip of the needle. The forceps gently averts the wound edge while the needle is inserted at an angle of 90 degrees to the skin. In our first suture, the needle is brought out through the wound. The needle is remounted onto the needle holder and reinserted at the same depth on the other side to ensure symmetry. When rotating the needle through the skin on the other side, eversion of the edge is aided by pushing gently with the forceps on the skin just in front of the exiting needle. The needle is removed and the suture pulled through. We will now perform a surgeon's knot by wrapping the suture around the needle holder twice and pulling the tail of the suture towards the surgeon. To prevent this first knot loosening, it is locked by pushing the short end abruptly back to where it was. A secure reef knot is then performed to secure the surgeon's knot. The suture is cut with the tip of the scissors. In a simple wound, the needle can go through the whole wound in one go. The needle is inserted at 90 degrees and the wrist is rotated. Gentle pressure of the forceps in front of the needle helps evert the wound. Once the surgeon's knot is performed, the knot is again locked. Once locked, the short end is gently brought back to the side near the surgeon and a reef knot is then performed. This is important because if the short end is treated after locking it to be away from the surgeon, you will end up with a slip knot. Again, you will see that the needle rotates through the wound and is not pushed in a straight manner. When performing each of the throws for the reef knot, the needle holder is always inserted inside the U shape made by the long end and short end of the suture. The three sutures are equidistant apart. The length of the suture is the same as the distance apart. All knots are to one side. Cut the sutures with the tip of your suture scissors. If cut too long, the ends will get caught on the next suture. If cut too short, the knot is less secure and may unravel.